Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Thank you very much for joining me today. In today's video, I will share my experience, which I have accumulated over the past nine years about camping in cold weather. I had quite a few nights where I slept down to minus nine degrees. And as I found out the hard way, if you're not well prepared for cold weather camping, it is no fun. So let's get into it. So quick story, when I started four-wheel driving around nine years ago, I had some four-wheel drive training in winter up in the Blue Mountains. And, um, you know, I had an Aldi sleeping bag. Uh, I had some cheap tent. I had some normal air mattress. So I went up there the weekend and thought, beautiful, nice weekend. The temperatures dropped to a minus one or minus two at night. My Aldi sleeping bag uh, didn't do anything to keep me warm. I went through my whole bag. I wore several jogging pants and a few jumpers and still had the most miserable night. So after that, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to look into a proper sleeping solution to sleep in the cold because I definitely didn't want to have a night like that. I also have to say I'm a cold sleeper, so I need really something quite a few degree warmer than, for example, my wife to keep me warm. To sleep well in cold climates, you definitely need two material things. One is your ground cover, your sleeping mat, and the second one is your actually sleeping bag solution. So let's first talk about the sleeping mat, your, your ground sheet. A lot of the cold really comes up from the ground, so having a good winter sleeping mat is absolutely vital. In the early days, I tried an air mattress which was not insulated or even a normal thin self-inflating mattress, and they definitely don't keep you warm if it's below zero degree. So if you have a look for a winter sleeping mat, it is quite important that it has a high R value. The R value um, tells you how good the mattress is insulated. And that is definitely something you should look out for when purchasing a mattress. For Australian winter camping, I'm looking for an R rating of minimum R5 or higher. You may wonder if you can use a high R rated mattress also in summer. I use my mattresses all year round and never found them too hot in summer. For example, these expat down uh, sleeping mat, it's rated up to minus 24 degrees and has an R value of 5.8. Then I have uh, expat synthetic sleeping mat, it has an R value of 5.2 and is rated up to minus 20 degrees. Their bowls are 65 centimeter wide and 197 long. And my Thermorest Neo Air Dream has an R value of R6, so that is definitely the warmest of all of my mattresses. And if space and weight is no issue, that is the mattress I take if I travel solo. Next week I go on the Simpson Desert with both of my kids. The kids have a swag, however I have my stretcher and I won't have enough space for this mattress likely. So that means I will take uh, this mattress here which still 5.2 R rating. I will be alright in the desert, I have tested that before. When choosing the right air mattress, it is also very important to have the right size. I made the mistake of purchasing a Klimit a Static V insulated sleeping mattress, but I did not check the length and the width of the mattress, um, which had a very good R rating, but I didn't really look at the width. And I tried that mattress at Dunn Swamp and I had a freezing night because it really did end pretty much with uh, my main body, but it didn't cover my shoulders and my arms. And to keep reasonably warm that night, I pretty much had to sleep like this because every time my arms went next to my body, the cold came up and it was freezing. So make sure that when you purchase a sleeping mat that it is wide enough for you, a little bit wider than shoulder width for sure and also long enough. You see, you know, short pads, um, I would definitely not recommend that for winter because if your feet hang over the mattress, they get cold very quick. 
One other thing to consider is the noise of some of the insulated mattresses. So it's worthwhile testing them actually somewhere in a store because some of them can be very noisy. For example, like these uh, Klimit here Static V. So what about stretchers? Can you sleep on a stretcher in winter? Yes, 100%. I'm doing it for many years. As long as you have a good R-rated mattress, it is absolutely no issue to sleep on a stretcher and far more comfortable than in a swag. At least that is for me. Are you collecting ice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're having cold drinks later on. <laughs> 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 so the next important thing is really the sleeping bag solution. And I experimented with that quite a bit. After my uh, disastrous night in the Aldi winter sleeping bag, I bit the bullet and I bought three down Katmandu sleeping bags. Two summer sleeping bags and one minus two winter sleeping bag. And initially I used them individually for summer, the summer sleeping bag, for winter, the winter sleeping bag. But I found that personally for me, that even the minus two comfort winter sleeping bag is not warm enough if it's minus two, minus three. That's just me. I then ordered from eBay a US Army sleeping solution, which consisted of two sleeping bags, which you put inside each other, and then one bivy bag. Unfortunately, that solution was too short for me. And um, the sleeping bag, I think, was only two meters long. And I'm 193, two meters way too short, so that didn't work out. But it gave me the idea of the dual sleeping bag solution. And that's what I have been using ever since. So this is kind of my triple sleeping solution. Um, at the moment I have two summer sleeping bags. One is Comfort plus five and the other is Comfort plus seven. Um, if I go in the Victorian high country in winter or if I know it's really cold, I actually have one minus two sleeping bag and then one of the summer, summer down sleeping bags inside plus the inliner. And I find that very useful because I can zip up and down the sleeping bags depending on how hot or cold it is. If uh, it turns out it's not that cold, I'm gonna leave one uh, sleeping bag unzipped. If the temperature drops at night, I can zip it up again. Inside the sleeping bag, I also have a silk inliner that adds another around five degrees and it also keeps your uh, sleeping bag uh, clean. You can wash it when you come home from a trip. It's something you should definitely do if you sleep in a sleeping bag, have an inliner, either silk, I bought them from eBay, or uh, you can get them from any camping store or a cotton inliner. Something which can breathe and something you can easily wash. You can also purchase fleece inliners. I carry one but use them rarely, only on very cold nights and then I usually use it to fill up the empty space at the bottom of my sleeping bag. They are non-breathable so I don't find them as comfortable as a silk or cotton inliner. When you look for a sleeping bag, there are a few things which are important. You want to make sure that the zipper is actually covered. Some sleeping bags have something outside, some have something inside, because if the zipper is exposed, the cold will come through that zipper. The Kathmandu sleeping bags have a down flap, which goes inside all over the zipper and makes sure that you don't have cold spots where the zipper is. While the cheap Aldi Ridge Rider does have a draft tube, just look at the size, how small it is, and it barely really covers the zipper. For winter camping, I definitely make sure that the opening at the top has a draft tube around it, as well as a string, so that you can regulate the size of the opening and how much of your face and neck is exposed. It is quite amazing in very cold nights, if you leave a sleeping bag open and you don't have a draft tube, how much heat actually escapes there. The size of the sleeping bag is also important. In the early days, I could never sleep in one of these narrow sleeping bags. However, I now trained myself to do that because a very wide and comfortable sleeping bag, which gives you a lot of room, 
unfortunately for me it stays also very cold especially at the feet area so i now prefer a tapered sleeping bag which goes narrower at the bottom where your feet are and then obviously a bit wider at the top it is important though that it's not too narrow because if you're going to compress the insulation material may it be down may it be synthetic that will take out the insulation and you will get cold so it definitely needs to have some room uh, to the left and right of your shoulders let me quickly explain the comfort ratings for winter sleeping bags. You will often see a rating scale from comfort to lower limit and extreme. Unless the temperatures are rated in accordance with EN 13537, which is a uniform standard you need to pay for, they are likely not the same, it could be way off. Especially with cheaper sleeping bags that are often advertised with the guest extreme limit. Under the EN 13537 standard, the comfort rating is what a woman or a cold sleeping man will be comfortable with. The lower limit is what a warm sleeping woman or a man normal sleeping will be comfortable with. And the extreme rating means you likely will not die of hypothermia that night, but it will be a miserable night and certainly not a rating you ever should go by. And I want to say it again, you can have the best and warmest sleeping bag, you still need a high R rated mattress, otherwise you will not be warm. Until I made the video, I didn't realize that I accumulated over 20 sleeping bags in the past 9 years. These are a lot of different types of bags from synthetic to down to cheap to expensive. So I tested quite a few bags over the past 9 years. I've got long legs so in very cold nights I still can get a little bit cold feet at the bottom of the sleeping bag, especially early in the morning. Uh, Shady Creek campground after a reasonably fresh night at five o'clock or so or six o'clock uh, just at daylight the feet got a little bit cold but uh, was still all right didn't bother me to get up uh, i'm going to take the fleece in but otherwise uh, two sleeping bag solution actually worked quite well but i find um, putting my clothes in the bottom of the sleeping bag usually i wear fleece in winter and uh, my shorts that actually helps to fill out that void there keeps my feet warmer and the added benefit is that you actually slip into warm clothes in the morning um, and on a cold morning that's quite comforting there's a long-term debate going on whether it's better to sleep naked or just in your undies in a sleeping bag or to layer up there are two sides one side says oh you need to sleep naked because that right away gives all the heat into your sleeping bag and then the actual sleeping bag does the insulating and keeps you warm then the second opinion is no a sleeping bag is just like a house and inside the house you also don't run around naked in winter in my experience uh, the truth lies somewhere in the middle and I really did extensive uh, testing with having a lot of layers on and no layers on. Nowadays, I usually just wear my undies. I wear a merino long sleeve shirt and that's pretty much it. Sometimes some loose wool socks as well, but that is enough for me. On a very cold night, I may also wear some long johns, but I make sure that they're out of merino. There are also a few things which you can do before going to bed to make sure that you're warm when you sleep. Keep in mind, no sleeping bag generates heat. You warm up the sleeping bag with your heat and it just keeps the heat trapped and that makes you warm. So if you already go to bed cold, it will take a long time to get warm and sometimes you don't even get warm and have the whole night cold. So make sure that you sit around the fire before you go to bed, that you warm yourself up. If there is no fire, I would recommend going for a little walk. You know, walk for five, 10 minutes. Not that you're really sweaty because you definitely don't want to go to bed wet, but so that you just your body temperature heats up a little bit, your blood circulates and then go quickly into bed. It is also helpful on cold nights to have a warm, good dinner um, before you go to bed. Um, because first of all, the, the warm dinner warms you a little bit up from the inside, but it also gets all your intestines and everything going and it increases your overall blood circulation. So on a very cold night, going to bed after having had a warm dinner will definitely help to keep you warm in the sleeping bag. 
Another option would be to just place a hot water bottle at the bottom of your sleeping bag, probably around 10 minutes before you jump in, and that gives you a nice cozy sleeping bag. I don't use electrical sleeping solutions, however, you can get 12 volt blankets, uh, which you can power easily from a, a battery pack overnight, which would provide a warm night regardless how cold it is outside. I find it also very important to keep your head warm, especially for someone like me without hair. Many years ago, I developed a habit uh, in my travels in Thailand to have a t-shirt over my head, mainly because we actually partied uh, in the early morning and I just can't sleep if it is very bright. So I started folding a t-shirt, wearing that over my eyes, but that actually works also very well in winter because I just have it open and use it as a kind of a cap. However, you can also wear a woolen beanie, a silk beanie or a cotton beanie to keep your head warm. So can you get away with cheap gear when doing cold weather camping? From my personal experience, it pays to invest in some good quality gear which exactly suits your application and this stuff tends to last for many many years so my advice would be invest in a good cold weather setup and you definitely can sleep comfortable and warm in cold weather so i have another little tip for you for winter camping which i reckon is worth the space it takes up especially if you intend to spend some time around the campfire and sitting on your chair these chairs are not the warmest chairs. For example, the Helinox chairs are not insulated because obviously they are super lightweight chairs, but even an insulated chair becomes uh, cold very quickly. So here's my little tip to keep your bum warm. Some years ago, I purchased two sheepskins, the black one here, and I also have a double length white one. And that is just absolutely brilliant for winter camping, not only to keep your bum, but also your kidneys, lower back and upper back warm. You can get them on eBay from around $40. I think I paid uh, around 70 at the time and 120 for my double length one. Definitely a well worth investment. So I hope uh, I provided you some useful tips and information and explained a bit how I sleep comfortably in cold climates. If the video was helpful to you, I would greatly appreciate if you could like, share, subscribe and maybe even become one of my Patreon supporters. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can help me create these videos for you. Thank you very much and I hope to see you along the tracks.